Hello Nikit fans, admittedly, January was a slower month to kick off the year, but in the midst of all of that are golden opportunities for smaller games and developers to get discovered, so here are the indie games of the month which I think are worth a play. Let's begin with Velocity Noodle, a cyberpunk pixel art precision platformer that simply feels great to play. You're making your way through these levels in an attempt to deliver noodles on time with a pretty neat blink mechanic as well, making it for fans of the genre. I always love the concept of blacksmiths in games, whether they be vendors that improve the gear of a hero, or on the flip side where you are playing as the blacksmith, which is why Blacksmith Legends got my attention in the first place. You are running your own shop, crafting weapons and armour, and even influencing the fate of the kingdom. You can recruit adventurers to go on missions to get loot and ingredients, all while managing the finances and keeping the shop going. Yes, it's not the most beautiful graphically, and the gameplay itself is not exactly amazing, but there's something to this game if you love cleverly designed management sims. I thought that Please Touch the Artwork would have done much better since this minimalist puzzle game is very sleekly designed, but perhaps like fine art, might lack a critical mass in appreciation of its subtle details. This has you creating abstract art based on famous pieces, with three main types of puzzles which gradually ramp up in difficulty. It certainly is for puzzle game fans and is not the most action-focused title, but a very well put together entry in the genre. If you've been around video games long enough, you will certainly not find anything too new or novel about Heaven Dust 2, since, in many ways, this follows the templates of Resident Evil quite closely, with some bits and bobs shifted around. You wake up from cryogenic sleep, in a research base surrounded by zombies and need to explore, get key items, solve puzzles and escape, all while having to manage scarce resources and ammo. However, it is pretty well made and enjoyable, and thus deserves a spot on the list. One of the cutest titles of the month is Paparazzi, a first-person photography game that has you taking photos of derpy dogs and gets extra props for the clever title. Everything in this world is a little bit off, like the fact that you play as a living camera with arms and legs, and that the dogs themselves look very derby and perhaps behave in ways that dogs are not meant to be. There is an interesting upgrade system around upgrading yourself or the camera, in changing lenses and the type of film, having to mess with filters and zooms to capture that perfect shot, being a very cosy title worth a play. In my last video, I just talked about how have a nice death may be the shot in the arm that the roguelite space needs, but that is not belittling the efforts of games like Nightmare the Lunatic, since this Korean made title is pretty neat and worth a play.
In some ways, this looks like Skull the Hero Slayer in terms of pixel art and enemies, where a hero has three weapons to switch between, and most interestingly, this weapon switching mechanic is actually woven into the gameplay, which makes combat feel quite unique. You can be slashing away at enemies with your sword, only to roll away and switch to the revolver, and then to get back in close to finish them off with a warhammer, where swapping between weapons gives you a boost for special abilities. Plenty of weapon variety per run and even permanent upgrades keeps it compelling, making this one to watch in early access. Speaking of interesting roguelites, Edge of the Abyss Awaken is a third-person action title with a roguelite structure which is very interesting indeed. I initially thought that this was a Souls-like title based on what was shown off, but the action is a lot less deliberate and a lot more flashy, leaning more on the Devil May Cry end of things, although it is of course not as over the top. There are randomized perks and upgrades mid-run, as well as meta progression elements, but the level designs are not completely procedural generated and do use pre-built pieces put together. An entry like this as roguelite is not common at all in the space, so who knows, we may begin to see more third-person action games try to do so, and do note that this is an early access release which is expected to last about 6-8 to eight months with more levels, enemies, bosses and upgrades to come. Yet another roguelite title of interest is Deflector, a top-down action title reminiscent of Beacon from December 2021, where you're finding a way to survive and evolve in the dangerous world, upgrading your character with the DNA that you find. As is the name of the game, the main mechanic here involves deflecting enemy projectiles back at them, which of course means enemy attack patterns resembling something like Enter the Gungeon, but where it can actually be used as a counter-attack. It looks good, a little generic sci-fi but not too bad, so it's another title that I'm keeping an eye on in early access. If you cannot already tell, I do like the endless replayability of roguelite and how their upgrades are structured, which is why we have our fourth roguelite title in a row with Rogue Tower, one that applies the concept to a tower defense game which seems to be one of the main success stories in this sub-sub genre. It is an endless title where the map continually expands outwards and you are placing and upgrading towers to destroy oncoming enemies before they get to your base. As is part of modern roguelite design, after the end of every run, you do gain XP which is used to unlock new powers, upgrades and permanent upgrades with a very extensive upgrade skill tree so there's plenty to do. If you enjoy awesome action in games, Watcher Chronicles should be a title of interest since this is a 2D Souls-like title with an impressive variety in builds and deliberate combat which is perhaps bogged down by its art style. I've seen some comments saying that this is Salt and Sanctuary mixed with Castle Crashers or Adventure Quest where the fantastic combat and enemy design concepts have a certain flash game feel to the art and animation which unfortunately may have been to its detriment since it isn't selling too well. However, I do like that this is different from the usual grimdark fare 
and that the challenging boss fights are a highlight, so of course I have to give a shout out to this tremendously underrated hidden gem taking the number one spot. For more Souls-like titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.